Hello and welcome to the December subscription coffee tasting video. Happy Festivus everyone and Merry Christmas for those of you who are celebrating that. We are tasting three coffees this, uh, in this video that we're sending out to all our subscribers around the world uh, on the first Wednesday of the month. So this is going out on the first Wednesday of December. And I've selected three very, very nice coffees for the holiday season. Of course, Christmas is a big thing here in Norway, so a lot of people drink coffee uh, because uh, we have time off. There's banking holidays and everything, so it's important to have something very, very delicious, I think. So we traditionally don't really sell Christmas coffee, but we have called these two coffees our Christmas edition just to help people select something that's very, very nice to drink during the Christmas holidays. So without further ado, let's start tasting. I brewed these as a V60 coffees. And if you want to check out how we brew V60, we have a video on YouTube and also on our webpage uh, in our brewing guides where you can learn how to brew V60. But you can also brew these on uh, normal filter drippers or AeroPress or French press or whatever. They will taste delicious regardless, trust me. So let's get started. Uh, we are sending out three different coffees, so if you subscribe to one bag, you will get the first coffee. If you subscribe to three bags, you get one of each. And if you subscribe to more, up to six bags, you will get maybe two of these, two of that, and two of that. So that's how it works. Uh, the first coffee I've selected this year is actually an Ethiopian coffee. It's a washed coffee. Last month we sent out uh, a natural processed coffee from uh, the farm Tatmara. Uh, which is located in Bonga, or near Bonga, uh, in Kaffa. This time, uh, this coffee is a little bit further north, uh, but not far away. It's just, it takes a while to drive from the two farms. So this is from a farm called Echemu. The farmer's name is Khalid Shifa, and he has inherited a farm from his grandfather, where uh, his grandfather actually took some seeds from the forest, that's what they say, and planted the trees on the farm and uh, the trees have been growing ever since. And when you visit the farm, you actually more walk below the coffee trees than among the coffee trees, because they are so tall and skinny and strange, and they actually have to climb the trees in order to pick the coffee. Uh, Khalid doesn't do any fertilizing or anything, you just do manual weeding with a, like a machete. And the trees have just been growing for, I think he's the third generation, yes. So uh, probably 50, 60, 70, 80 years, I don't know. I don't know exactly when they were planted. Uh, traditionally, Khalid has only done natural processing uh, and also he started doing honey processing. He's been collaborating very closely with the green coffee importer Belco, which is located in France. And it's through Belco that I met uh, Khalid and have started to buy his coffees. And I think this is the fourth year we're buying the coffees. And this is the first time we have washed coffees that are really, really delicious. Like we bought the washed coffees last year and that was the first time he produced that because he uh, constructed a new wet mill last year. Um, so we bought the first kind of batches of that. But the problem was he was mixing uh, all the batches together and they were kind of bulked together. Uh, so the quality was a little bit uh, kind of uh, random, I, I would say. It was good, but not as good as the potential was, I think. So. This time, uh, which was, I guess, last December, that's when we, he started harvesting, we asked him to separate the different batches, keep them separate so we could taste through them and select the ones that we wanted to buy. And we did actually reject one or two lots because the quality wasn't there. And the problem would have been if he had mixed everything together, it would have taken down the quality of the best lots as well. So I'm really glad we did this because the coffee is tasting really, really phenomenal this year. So this is not a kind of a traditional Ethiopian. If you're used to drinking a lot of coffee from Yirga Chefe and Sidamo, this is a little bit different. Um, I'm not sure what cultivars these are because these are very old cultivars taken from local uh, seed sources. So it's not the kind of new and improved cultivars that you see. Very often we write numbers like 741110, 741112. Uh, those are kind of uh, the improved cultivars that uh, the research foundation in Ethiopia has been releasing and, and selling to farmers. So these are, from Khalid's farm, it's just the old ones. Let's taste. Mm -hmm. Now, when you drink a washed Ethiopian coffee, you can always expect floral notes, some citric notes. Uh, I find that this too also tastes a little bit like peach and uh, like nectarines, like stone fruit. It's very, very clean, very kind of delicate, very tea-like. 
So a lot of people say this tastes like Earl Grey tea. Uh, it can taste like bergamot and florals. But it's actually the tea that tastes like this coffee. Because this is not flavored. The tea is flavored with bergamot oil. So uh, think about that next time you say the coffee tastes like tea. No, the tea tastes like coffee. That's the way it is. This is, um, for me, very, very delicate, nice coffee. Lots of sweetness, a lot of fruitiness. I sometimes get a little bit of rhubarb, but uh, it's mainly these kind of stone fruit flavors. It's quite high acidity, but it's balanced with a lot of sweetness and this kind of delicious fruity flavors. So for me, it's quite of a juicy coffee. Um, this particular brew is a little bit low on extraction, but I don't mind that. It's still really delicious. Um, it's a little bit weaker than maybe a lot of people prefer, but it really brings out the florals and the fruitiness in the coffee. So when you brew this coffee, don't be afraid of adjusting the grinder. A little bit coarser, a little bit finer. Uh, it's pretty easy to extract, I think, to be a light roast. So uh, you will have a delicious cup of coffee anyway, I think. It's also very nice as a French press, believe it or not, but uh, it also brings out a little bit more of that kind of richness and sweetness in the coffee. So the first coffee we're sending out from Ethiopia, very close to Agaro, uh, in the kind of southwest of Ethiopia and from the farm Achemo, the farmer's name, Khalid Shifa. And uh, I'm really glad to be able to buy this coffee. And uh, Belko, the green import company, has been helping us with uh, uh, exporting the coffee. They're doing quality control together with Khalid. They have been training him on washing techniques and drying techniques. So they're kind of a vital part in this uh, coffee because without them, uh, we wouldn't have been able to progress as fast because they are the ones that are on the ground kind of helping him and doing the communication between us. So I'm really happy to be able to work together with those. And we need those kind of partners in, at Origin in order to really progress uh, with the coffees. Cool. And the reason why I selected this as a Christmas edition coffee, we're of course going to sell it after Christmas as well, but we have three different lots. We're starting with the, the lot that I find to be kind of a little bit more uh, on the stone fruit side maybe. Um, but uh, I just, I had like several coffees that I was considering, but I, uh, this was so delicious and so easy to brew. So I thought this is a great gift for people and also a really nice coffee to drink, you know, during Christmas where you eat a lot of kind of uh, hearty food and everything. It's nice to have something refreshing and juicy to kind of refresh your, your appetite a little bit. Okay, the second coffee is also, uh, we had this last year. I think we had the same uh, Christmas edition coffees last year, but uh, there's a reason for that because they are delicious, I think. And uh, this coffee from Kiahia, it's a small estate in Kenya. Uh, it has probably been my favorite Kenyan coffee two years in a row. I always say that about Kenyan coffees, like the Kagera we sent out a couple of months ago. was also really, really fantastic. The Karagoto is, was really fantastic this year. But this one is like something in a different league, I think. Um, and I believe it's because the farmer has mainly planted SL28 and SL34. It, it, there's no Ruiru or anything in here. And he has been well trained as well with a, uh, uh, an exporter called Kahava Bora and uh, has a good tradition of, of growing good coffee. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to visit this farm. And I also got news uh, this year that the farmer actually passed away, unfortunately. So hopefully uh, his kids will be able to take his legacy and, and bring the farm into the future as well. I hope so, because this is too delicious of a coffee to kind of just uh, neglect the farm. So let's cross fingers that uh, the family will also progress and as good coffee farmers. Mm -hmm. As you can expect from a Kenyan coffee, lots of kind of blackcurrant, really high acidity, but also a lot of kind of body and texture and intensity of flavor. I get blackcurrants, blackberries, it's quite winy. Um, reminds me of this kind of red wine kind of feeling when you drink it. Um, it might seem that it has a little bit lower acidity than the Ethiopian, but it's just a different type of acidity, I think. And uh, it's, it's very intense for me, but also because the flavor is so intense, you don't really mind it. It's really juicy and refreshing. So this is a farm located in Nyeri, and uh, Nyeri is famous for having very delicious coffees in Kenya. And this, I think, for me is no exception. It's super, super clean, super ripe, juicy, winy, and everything you can expect from a delicious Kenyan coffee. 
Mm. So juicy. And we only have a limited amount of this coffee. So we're sending it out to our subscribers, of course, but we will be selling it also during Christmas. But I'm suspecting that this will sell out before Christmas Eve, actually. That's just the way it is. Sometimes you just don't have enough coffee and that's because the farm doesn't produce that much coffee. It's a small farm. It's not a cooperative, it's a small estate in Kenya. Cool. The third coffee is also kind of a Christmassy coffee, although it's not a Christmas edition coffee. We haven't uh, put it out for sale yet, but it's a Pacamara coffee from Los Pirineos. We did send out Pacamara, I think it was last month, um, but that was a honey processed Pacamara. This one is a washed uh, Pacamara. I believe they have been fermenting it a little bit and then uh, washed it with a mechanical mucilage remover. And Los Pirineos, you probably know if you're following us, this is a farm located in El Salvador. And uh, Hilberto Barona, who kind of uh, managed the farm uh, for many years and was my good friend, he passed away and now it's his kids that are running the farm and they're doing an excellent job. So I think for me the quality has been you know, better and better every year and this was kind of the legacy of Hilberto. He was working really hard in order to improve the farm in the long run. His pacamaras or their pacamaras are normally quite delicious, I think. And uh, this one actually has a little bit of hint of fermentation in it. And it's quite chocolatey, uh, has a lot of these kind of red berries that you get from uh, a little bit of fermentation. Uh, but it's not like a natural or anything, it's just there to kind of give you a little bit more fruit and a little bit more punch in the, in the flavors. Mm. It's like milk chocolate, red fruits, a little bit of dried fruits and lower acidity than the African coffees, obviously. But still quite refreshing and sweet and kind of juicy coffee. And for me this is one of the coffees that I considered for the Christmas editions because it kind of just reminds me of stuff that I eat for Christmas like chocolate, you know, fudgy cakes and dried fruits and stuff like that. So if you enjoy the Pacamara from last month, this one I believe has a little bit higher acidity maybe and maybe a little bit more funky flavor although it's more of a washed coffee and the one last month was a honey processed coffee. So just because it says washed or honey or natural on the bag, it doesn't mean that you necessarily get those flavors of fermentation. It really, really depends on how the coffee was dried, how it was fermented, how it was processed. So you can actually quite easily get a washed coffee to taste like a natural. It's more difficult to get a natural to taste like a washed coffee, but uh, it all, it's all down to fermentation. And if you want to learn more about coffee fermentation, I can highly recommend uh, listening to our podcast called Funky Coffee. It's episode eight, I think. But there's another podcast that, is, that I love listening to, which is called Making Coffee with Lucia Solis. She's uh, currently living in uh, Colombia and she's a fermentation expert. She used to work in wine and has education from wine industry, but is now focusing on coffee and consulting in coffee. So if you haven't listened to that podcast, I highly recommend it for Christmas. Drink one of these coffees and think about what she's saying when it comes to terroir flavors, where does the flavor come from, how does the fermentation affect flavor. And I can say on this coffee at least, there has been a little bit of fermentation taking place here to kind of flavor the coffee a little bit. In a positive way, I think, not in a negative way, then I wouldn't buy it. So there you have it, three very different coffees that we're sending out for all our subscribers. If you want to subscribe, go to our webpage. You can sign up for one to six bags. You can pause it at any time. You can stop it at any time. And it's a good deal, I think. You get a little bit better price for the coffee, but also you get to taste some of the coffees that we are not able to sell in other channels because the amount we have of those coffees are limited. So we have quite, quite often we have coffees that are exclusive for our subscribers. So, hope you enjoyed the video, hope you have a nice holidays, happy festivals everyone, Merry Christmas, and hope to see you in the next year.